Hello everyone, today I'm going to take you through creating a privacy policy similar to this one, which will work for your Rails app. Now, not a lot of this is going to be code related, it's instead going to be using a third party generator. I'm just going to quickly show you how to set up a basic Rails application, but the main focus of this is just going to be like, how do you generate a privacy policy? Because I feel like this is sort of the thing that's not really talked about a lot, uh, and I feel like a generator like the one we're going to be using, which is going to be Termly, can be very helpful for this. So to get started, we're just gonna create the Rails app real quick. We're gonna say Rails new, we'll call it privacy. I'll uh, remember how to type next time, I promise. We'll go ahead and we'll run that. Now, the the nice thing about a uh, tool like this is you got people that are probably smarter than you in terms of legal uh, issues that are generating this. It is important to note, however, that they aren't providing legal advice, so you can't sue them if, uh, if things go sour. Uh, and I'm also not providing legal advice, so please don't leave mean comments in, in the comment section down below telling me I'm dumb because I rely on third-party tools. Uh, at the end of the day, having a privacy policy is probably better than having none, and it feels like this one makes sense uh, in terms of what, uh, what it's being used for. So we'll talk about it uh, as soon as we finish making the quick little demo here. Now, it, it's telling me that I don't have anything here, so I have to CD into privacy because I named it privacy inside of a privacy folder. Very, very smart. Uh, once we're in here, we're going to generate a controller. This will be our pages controller with a home action and the privacy uh, page action as well. Once that's done, we'll type Rails S to start our server. I'm now realizing we don't have VS Code open, so I'll also type code dot and then we can do a Rails S to start our server. Okay, so once we're in here, we're gonna come into our config, our routes.rb, because you're not here for a basic overview of how uh, a Rails app works. So it, we'll just uh, change the root to be the home, and then we'll do a two for the uh, pages privacy action. Once that's done, we can come into our explorer, our app, our views, our pages, and our home page. And inside of our home page, we'll create a quick little link to the privacy. So we'll say link to privacy policy. I'll like control B to hide the side panel. And then we'll, this will take us to our privacy path. We'll come over here. We will go to the root of our application. And here is our privacy policy. Now, of course, you'd probably want this in like your footer, um, but it also helps to just know how to create these links if you want to. Once you uh, visit the page, you then want it to display that privacy policy we were just looked, looking at. The issue is, if I tell you how to generate something that is similar to the one that I use, it won't work for you. Because of course, we're going to be using different like data collection, we'll have different third party tools running on our website, etc. So having a generator is a much better solution than doing what a lot of people do, which is they just copy the uh, like privacy policy they go they go to like google and they're like uh example privacy policy website right and then they just grab the first one that they can find and they copy it and this is for google analytics specifically so it won't even work for you now that's really not ideal because it's not catered to you so using a generator is definitely a good thing the other side of the issue, though, is if I just use a generator, like we're going to be using the Termly one, so we can go to Google and we can search for Termly uh, privacy, and then we can click on the uh, I don't know, products privacy policy generator link, which is right here. If you're using a generator like this, uh, and a lot of people do this, I have seen this before. I've also seen this with cookies. I'll explain that in a second. Make sure that whatever you're actually selecting is the thing that your website does. Don't say that you don't track names if you're actually tracking names. Don't say you don't track passwords uh, because users use passwords to log in. Make sure if users use passwords to log in that you say that they use passwords to log in. And finally, if you generate a privacy policy today and you add a new feature a week from now that requires the user's phone number, update your privacy policy. Make sure that these things are up to date. Similarly, if you have a cookie uh, consent banner and you have a cookie uh, consent page or a cookie policy generator like right here, make sure that you are uh, actually like letting the, the cookie banner disable the cookies. Don't let the cookies keep running. It's not, it's not gonna get you out of legal compliance. I'm not a lawyer, I'm not giving you legal advice. If your banner doesn't disable the cookies, it's not gonna work. 
And every time I go to a website, and I think they did a study on this, it's like 40 or 50% of websites on the internet that have a cookie banner, they don't disable the cookies. You click decline, and then you come up here, you click on the little thing, and there's still like 20 cookies running on the website. So just, just be aware of that. Make sure you're updating your stuff as you're going through. Once you're done with that, uh, I'm gonna click generate privacy policy real quick, and hopefully it, uh, yeah, I already have one here. Uh, I'm gonna be using this one. But uh, essentially, it's going to take you through a whole bunch of different questions. Uh, maybe I can actually do this. Let me open up incognito, and I'll go to Termly's uh, product page. I'll click Generate New Privacy Policy. And uh, yeah, so this is what you're going to see before you create an account. I'm going to click Preferences, and I'm going to Decline All. Yeah, so you're going to go through here. You're going to click Website. You're going to give yourself or whatever the URL for your website is and then you're gonna click next. One thing to be aware of in all of these is it doesn't do any validation. It's just assuming that you know what you're talking about. And you're gonna go through here, you're gonna click all of these, whatever is required. As you change your options, you'll see the progress bar like increase or decrease depending on how many additional options you just like gave yourself. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you're doing this to the best of your ability. Uh, and afterwards, you're probably gonna want a lawyer to take a look at it. But at least you're gonna have like a, a getting started point, right? Now, if you're just creating this over the course of a weekend, it probably matters less. If it's an established website where for some reason you're just now generating your privacy policy, then yeah, you're gonna want a lawyer to take a look at it. So just make sure as you're going through this that you're doing everything you need to and that you are, uh, that you're not like, I don't know, failing to reversion your privacy policy that you're not uh, lying about what's being, you know, collected. And again, you know, like ignorance of the law does not get you out of accountability. So saying, I didn't know that I was collecting social security numbers when I put in the social security number tracker last week, uh, it's really not gonna fly. But uh, yeah, you can just go through here. You can, you know, answer the questions as you see fit. Uh, and here is where you start getting into the interesting stuff like emails and names and usernames and passwords. Also, anything that collects like IP addresses or geolocation. So like if you're using an analytics tool like um, Ahoy and you're collecting that information through the Ahoy events, you're going to want to make sure you're disclosing it because, I mean, it's something that you're doing and your end user wants to know about it prob probably. But okay, once you've gotten through all of this and you've to followed my totally not legal advice to answer questions and use some shady tool on the internet, uh, you should be good to go. So in this case, you'll have a privacy policy generated after you log in, you can click on it to view the details and you can see the entire thing that gets generated. There's a whole bunch of plain text English here that sort of uh, tries to make this as accessible as possible. You have your table of contents. If we click on one of these, it takes you there, which is really cool. There's an entire table here that tells you all the stuff that you're tracking or not tracking etc 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 uh there's going to be questions about links and cookie policies etc make sure you're you're answering those and you're providing those links uh and then if you do have like a link in here like to your cookie policy make sure you go generate one of those and that you create that page as well now once this is done you can click the add to website button because we're using the cheapo free version we're going to use the html format we're going to click copy to uh, clipboard and now that you've listened to me talk for like 10 minutes uh, you can go ahead and you can paste this into your privacy policy page. You can paste it in here. It's going to look like there's a bunch of inline styling with nothing else here, but that's very deceptive because there is one key line right here, which it looks like it's line 41 for me, which is the entire privacy policy on one horizontal line. Once I hit control S with my prettier gem or prettier extension, it's going to automatically format this and you can see all of the stuff that you just pasted in. So you now have 750 lines of code. And if your boss is like measuring your productivity by lines of code, they're gonna think you're some kind of savant. Uh, and if they measure your productivity based on how many lines of code you remove from an application, you're probably gonna get put up for a performance review. But once this is done, uh, we'll get rid of these top two lines right here because they're redundant. We'll save this, we'll refresh, and you now have a privacy policy in your Rails app. But yeah, hopefully this is helpful and hopefully I will see you in the next tutorial. <laughs>